What is the meaning of life? Have you ever wondered that question? If you have, that's exactly what we're talking about today. What do you do when you don't know what the meaning of your life is and how can you find more meaning in your life? As always, I hope that you've never been in a place where you felt this way. But if you have, I wanna break down today some really easy and very helpful things you can do to find that meaning that you're searching for. I know that it's so easy to get stuck in a place where we feel hopeless. We think nothing matters and no one cares, but that's not reality. We can look for meaning, we can find meaning, and there are so many ways in which our life is meaningful. And today I'm gonna to share with you some really helpful things I've learned to put things in perspective and help us better understand the point of it all. So if you've been wondering how to get more meaning in your life, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Amber with Solutions for Simplicity and I'm thrilled to have you here. If you are new to this channel, it's all about helping you simplify your life. I provide you with tips and tools so that you can hurry up and do what you must so that you have more time for who and what matters to you. If you are new, please be sure and subscribe down below. Don't forget to ring that bell so you get notified every time I make a new video. And if this video helps you, I'd be so grateful if you'd give it a big thumbs up. Let's go ahead and get started. So I, for one, have definitely gone through many times in my life where I've wondered, what is it all for? That existential question, what is the meaning of life? Now, while that answer obviously differs for each and every one of us, I wanna encourage you today and just help you realize that you have the power to figure it out. Today, I'm especially going to be focusing on this book that was just absolutely transformative for me. I read it about a year ago. It's Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And I don't know if you've heard about it, but if you have not read this, you need to check this out right away. I'm sure you can find a copy at your local library, or I've included a link to um, Amazon down below if you wanna check it out there. Now, Viktor Frankl was an Austrian psychologist that ended up getting you know, sent to concentration camps and spending several years there, enduring such atrocities during World War II, only to get out and find out that he had lost his entire family, including his pregnant wife. And if anyone was asking the question of what life is for, it was him. But his background and experience as a psychologist, I think equipped him with a very unique perspective. And he has then shared all of that. And there are just so many golden nuggets, so much wisdom in this book that I wanna share with you today. In the book, Frankl cites Nietzsche as saying, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Meaning that no matter what we are going through, even if it is, more terrible than we could have possibly imagined and we have no idea in the moment how we will get through it, there is a way. And that no matter what, this is really the big point that he's trying to make, no matter what, no one can take away our freedom and responsibility to choose how we react to our circumstances. And that power is just an unbelievable gift because it means that we are not defined by what's happening to us. We're not defined or limited or you know, restrained by the world around us. We have the potential, and that's a word he uses a lot. We have the potential to find our meaning and to live out our meaning. And just having a will to know our meaning is a huge, huge thing in Frankel's mind. So Frankel argues that this motivation to find out our meaning and, and know the meaning of life is just an innate natural tendency for every human being. As long as we've lived, we've wondered what is the meaning of life, right? But Frankel is really emphasizing that as time has gone on, as society has gotten more advanced, he thinks this question has become even more imperative for everyone to answer. No longer are we living in these societies where we are dependent on working day in, day out just to survive. We have this luxurious life, or at least, you know, most of us 
have a luxurious life where we don't have to worry about how we're gonna put food on the table or how we are going to just survive till the very next day. And that leaves us with what Frankel calls an existential vacuum. We don't know what to do with ourselves because our purpose is no longer defined by what we have to do to get through each and every day like our ancestors had. Now for Frankel, there are three sources of meaning. And I'm sure he would say that maybe there are more than this. Everybody's meaning is unique. He does acknowledge that. But he mentions three big ways in which anyone can look for meaning and hopefully find meaning in their lives. The first way you can find more meaning is through work. And for Frankel, this was his calling, right? His psychology background that just led him to feel compelled to study the human psychology and write about what he saw, write about what he learned, and develop his theory of logotherapy, which I will come back to in a second. But, you know, throwing ourselves into work, not in an unhealthy way, but because we know that we have God-given gifts and talents that we are called and compelled to share with the world, that's a huge way that we can build more meaning into our lives. The second way that we can find more meaning is through love. And this sounds so nice, so rosy, but Frankel actually underscores that it's not about having reciprocated love. It's not necessarily about, you know, having those passionate feelings or a sense of perfect relationship. And we don't necessarily even have to be physically present with the person we love, just their memory, just knowing that they are out there or thinking of them and having them in our mind can move us forward and can fill our lives with the meaning that we seek. It's about feeling a love and a caring for others that makes you want to keep going for them, to make the world a better place for them, and that you have your mind and your heart fixated with love for whoever that is. For Frankel, his feelings of love for his wife and his relatives, those were big ways in which he kept going during his time in the concentration camps. The third way that we can find more meaning in our life, according to Viktor Frankl, is something that I highly doubt you have considered. I know I didn't. That is that we can find meaning through suffering. You heard that right. Sometimes the pain, the trauma, the hardship, the struggle, that has a purpose. Don't doubt that whatever you're going through, it's leading you to something greater. And it's something that we might have to go through in order to get where we are meant to be. Now, Frankel is very clear to say that suffering isn't necessary. It's not the only way you can find meaning in your life. But he does also say that he thinks suffering is an unavoidable part of life. And because everything is relative and what one person considers so terrible is different from what somebody else might think, you know, everybody's struggles, everybody's hardships are different. And we can't judge or assume that somebody else's suffering is any greater or less than ours. So what Frankel really wants us to do is consider that suffering as a service, as, you know, a burden perhaps that we are called to carry throughout life or at least a part of our life but it's not the only thing it's not something that is going to last forever and whatever it is we're going through i mean look at what he went through during his time in the concentration camp what he saw what he endured you know suffering can really result in beautiful beautiful new things so don't doubt that Frankel's big point is that no matter what we're going through and no matter how hopeless or without meaning we feel, there are ways in which we can find our meaning and that responsibility is on us. When we don't know our meaning, when we don't actively look for it and search it out, then we're not living up to our true potential. Never forget that we have a choice. No matter how bad our circumstances are, no matter what we're going through, it's up to us to choose how we react. 
And again, Frankel really talks about how now more than ever, and he was even writing in the 40s and 50s, whereas here we are 70 or so years later, right? I think this is all the more the case today, but back then he was noticing how many people had what he called give up itis in that they just didn't even care. They didn't know what to do with themselves. They were in this existential vacuum where they were wandering about and feeling like life was so meaningless without taking that responsibility to find the meaning that they needed. And it is that lack of meaning in Frankel's mind that leads to so many problems, so many ways in which we are you know, choosing to fill our lives with things that we think might bring us meaning, but don't. Things that leave us feeling empty, whether they're addictions or, you know, bad habits, things that we fall into because we have that existential vacuum, but that are not actually going to bring us the fulfillment that we seek. I imagine you can relate, right? So many of us often feel that sense of emptiness or if we don't feel fulfilled, if we don't know the meaning to our life, we do tend to look for it in the wrong places. And hopefully we can recognize that those aren't going to bring us true meaning. So while that may have been part of our journey, it's not too late to make a change. Now, as I mentioned, Frankel developed this really unique philosophy known as logotherapy, meaning meaning therapy, or that in order to cure your ailments, in order to get better, he thought the solution was to find the meaning of your life, which again, he thought could come from work, love, and or suffering. But the idea of logotherapy is, I think, really brilliant. Rather than the kind of more standard philosophy that a lot of psychologists and maybe just all of us in general tend to lean towards, which tells us that you know our past is something we need to work through and we've got to really dig down deep and figure out our limiting beliefs or all these other things, Frankel, in his view, says, screw that. It's not about the past. It's not about looking back. Whatever has happened, happened. In his mind, the solution is to look forward, to find your meaning and craft your new life with that in mind. Another huge wake up call I had reading this book was when Frankel said that we shouldn't ever expect a tensionless and stress-free life. If anything, that tension, that hardship, that weight we feel on our shoulders, that is making us stronger. That is helping us become who we are meant to be. So we shouldn't avoid it. We shouldn't always be looking for the easy way. We should actually relish in whatever trouble or difficulty we are experiencing because something great, unknown to us right now, but you know, after the fact, we will see that something great was the result. Okay, so here's the important thing I want you to know. We have a responsibility to find our meaning, to search it out, and to then live it every day here on out. I just want to leave you with one final thought. If we think about finding meaning in our life, maybe it's not a fast, immediate answer. Maybe we still don't really know the ultimate meaning of it all. But I think the best place to start and the place that Frankel seems to really emphasize we begin with is living our lives in service to something greater than ourselves. So if you are feeling hopeless, if you are curious and, and unsure what the meaning of life is right now, start by putting others' needs ahead of your own. And I will guarantee, as Frankel guaranteed, that that will create a deep, deep, deep sense of meaning and fulfillment more than we ever could have imagined. Frankel says, the more one forgets himself by giving himself to a cause to serve or another person to love, the more human he is and the more he actualizes his potential. This is about sacrifice. 
This is about knowing that we have something to give and others are in need. So let's not be so self-centered. Let's not think about meaning only in terms of our wishes, our desires, our cravings. Let's instead find meaning immediately by looking for ways we can help others and the world around us. And just having trust that this journey is all for a greater purpose. All right, I know this was a really deep conversation, but hey, finding the meaning of your life is an important question and one that I think we all wrestle with. So to find out more, don't forget to check out the link below, read Frankel's book for yourself. Seriously, it was one of the books that has had the most impact on my life, I think ever. So highly, highly recommend it. Thank you for watching. Please be sure and give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. Remember to subscribe before you go and come back next Thursday. I release new videos every week all about prioritization, productivity, time management, and that elusive thing we call work-life balance. I just love this time together. I love talking with you. Thank you for listening. As always, thank you for joining me on the journey. What should you do when you have blah, blah, blah. Hey, I'm Amber with Solutions for Simplicity and I'm losing my voice. And that was going so well. <laughs> but, what's his name? Coffee break. I think it should be whomever that is. Somebody asked my dad, he's the English teacher. Frankel's big point is that, oh, how does that always happen? What do I want to say? Now, where's the camera? <laughs> Which again, he thought could come from work, love, and suffering. <laughs> Cross that out. I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> I think this is getting pretty out there. <laughs>